it wouldn't be an event without you here to document it. <laughs> well, we do what we can. Yeah. Any pre-event jitters? Uh, not really, actually. Uh, especially after coming from doing TV last night. You know, yeah. There's some jitters for that, but uh, it went well. It was it was fun. Um, so I think we gave him a sense of what's going on here. Um, and his viewers, hopefully, some of them will check us out and say, hey, I want to be a part of that. Um, so, yeah, you know, the thing with cable news is that everyone seems to be focused on presidential politics and what's going on in D.C. And here we are trying to make people understand it's hopeless. <laughs> I mean, just look, at the, just look at the guys that are running right now. It's hopeless. You can't, you can't uh, take over D.C. Um, you know, what we can do is get that people to leave us alone. That's, that's what we want. New Hampshire could send four balls out anarchists to Mordor on the Potomac and it wouldn't make a bit of difference. No, they'll, they'll do what they, they're gonna do. So. so it just, I mean I knew, but I didn't, it didn't really sink in until I think uh, this morning. The alignment of the move trigger and the New Hampshire primary. Yeah. And the insanity that's going on here <laughs> now this very week. Any thoughts on Well, that is was, that was partly intentional. Uh, we wanted to trigger the move right around now so the journalists would be here and we could say to them, "Hey, come <laughs> to our press conference, come uh, cover this interesting movement that's really just getting started. We're just firing the starting gun on this mass migration of freedom lovers to New Hampshire." And uh, yeah, we've got uh, basically 2,000 people here, Free State Project participants, plus another 2,500 in-state friends of the FSB, like you yourself. And uh, already we're accomplishing a lot, but just imagine what it's going to be like when, once we have 20,000 people here. So it's happening. And, uh, you know, the... The naysayers who said, "Oh, this, you know, I don't want to move to New Hampshire. It's too cold. You're never going to get people. To, you know, never going to get libertarians to be effective at doing anything." We've proven them wrong time and time again, and um, we're we're just going to keep uh, keep building what we're doing right here in New Hampshire. All right. Well, congratulations. It's the end of the beginning. It is. Thank you, Bill. Has Bitcoin Classic released the binaries? All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Phillips. I am a member of the board of directors of the Free State Project, and I would like to thank everyone for being here this morning. Uh, we're very excited. Um, I'm just going to roll right into introducing um, Jason Sorens. Jason Sorens is the gentleman responsible for this crazy idea that he had published in 2001, uh, the idea about the Free State Project. Um, he. Uh, then went on to get his uh, PhD in political science from Yale. He is now a lecturer here in New Hampshire at Dartmouth University. And he lives uh, up there in Lebanon with his wife and daughter. Uh, without further ado, Jason Sorens. Thank you, Matt. This is a great day in the history of human freedom. It sounds grandiose, but I really believe it's true. We are firing the starting gun on a mass migration of freedom lovers to New Hampshire. Uh, I'll be speaking a little bit today about the origins and early history of the Free State Project. So the Free State Project came out of an idea that I had uh, while contemplating the miserable state of libertarian politics on the national stage following the 2000 election, and while studying for my PhD in political science. Even though libertarianism and its philosophical ancestor, classical liberalism, have produced great thinkers, scholars, writers, and orators such as Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Frederick Douglass, John Stuart Mill, H.L. Mencken, F.A. Hayek, Milton and Friedman, and Robert Nozick, they have failed to persuade any part of the world to implement their ideas consistently. We can point to countries such as the Netherlands, Switzerland, Hong Kong, uh, New Zealand, and Singapore as having certain parts 
of libertarian ideas on certain dimensions. But we don't have any place that brings all the best elements of those societies, policies, and institutions together. Our message in the United States is drowned out by the lobbyists, politicians, and parties in DC. So could libertarians make a difference by concentrating en masse in a particular place? There had already been several failed libertarian nation efforts aimed at colonizing uninhabited islands or building platforms in international waters. But what about finding an American state that was already relatively friendly to our ideas? My idea was that we could have influence far beyond our mere votes if we actually promoted our ideas, supported friendly candidates, and in short, were activists, not just voters. There were tens of thousands of American libertarians, and they'd find it much easier to move to another state than another country. Moreover, my dissertation research suggested that most Western democracies were decentralizing power to their regions. Some important examples include the UK, Belgium, and Italy. Since the New Deal, the US has gone in the opposite direction toward more centralization of power. But if that international trend reflects a desire for citizens in rich democracies for greater local control, then we might start to see more decentralization in the US. We might, to see, we might see the state level become an important ambit for new policies. In July 2001, I submitted an essay to an online journal called The Libertarian Enterprise, in which I proposed that 20,000 libertarians move to a single state um, where libertarians could work to create a majority in the legislature, pass libertarian reforms, and work for more autonomy from the federal government. I asked those who were interested in the idea to contact me. Uh, within two weeks, more than 200 people emailed me expressing interest. We put together a Yahoo club. It still exists as a Yahoo group. Um, and a website where we hammered out the details and conversations and with various polls that we ran on different elements of the idea. And then on September 1st, 2001, we presented our statement of intent. Every signer of the statement of intent agrees to move to the state chosen by the first 5,000 signers within five years after 20,000 have signed. And once there, exert the fullest practical effort toward the creation of a society in which the maximum role of government is protecting individuals' rights to life, liberty, and property. Uh, you are also allowed to opt out of particular states. Now, 10 days later, the September 11th attacks changed the mood of the country, and the Free State Project nearly withered on the vine. Then, in August 2002, the syndicated columnist Walter Williams wrote an article about us. I encourage people to join, uh, get us to move to Texas, and then secede from the Union. <laughs> Although his uh, goals were a little different from ours, his article provided a nice fillip uh, to our signer count. It now looked as if we could get to 5,000 signatures in a year or two. We set up a committee that winnowed down the candidate states to 10. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Delaware, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and Alaska. At that point, we became a big story in all of those states. Uh, the media coverage helped drive us rapidly to 5,000 signatures. We made some serious mistakes in those days, I have to admit. Uh, we should have held the state vote when we were closer to 20,000 signers, enjoyed all that free media coverage up to that point. Um, we should have uh, sent out our ballots first class. We sent out the state ballots for the state vote third class. It took about three weeks for people to get their ballots. They were never forwarded uh, to people who'd moved. Um, because a few people were concerned about vote fraud, we required everybody to have their ballot notarized. So you had to go to a notary and show an ID and all that. Uh, yeah. I was 26. <laughs> Despite all of that, we had about a 50% participation rate from our signers in the state vote. 
And one thing we did right was to allow voters to rank all the candidate states. Uh, we then picked the Condorcet winner. That is the state that defeated every other state by an absolute majority of votes. You can think of it kind of like a round robin tournament. On October 1st, 2003, we held a press conference in New York City to announce that New Hampshire had won the state vote. The runner-up was Wyoming, which defeated every state but New Hampshire and fell to New Hampshire by a vote of 57 to 43 percent. So, why did we choose New Hampshire? Along with the ballot, we sent out a pamphlet in which advocates of every one of those 10 states could make their case. Um, so I looked back at the case for New Hampshire. The New Hampshire essay was actually written by local libertarians who had signed up with the Free State Project and were re recruiting people to come here. They wanted us to choose New Hampshire. Uh, so that was a little different. Some of the other states were written by Free Staters who didn't live in those states. Right? And that sent a bit of a signal that New Hampshire was welcoming. Uh, the local Free Staters here in New Hampshire even recruited uh, then-Governor Craig Benson to sign up as a friend of the Free State Project. He welcomed us. He said he had a lot more in common with libertarians and many of his Republican colleagues. New Hampshire's combination of low taxes and social moderation is obviously attractive to libertarians. So are the legislative institutions with a citizen, virtually unpaid legislature. I see legislators in the room who can attest to that. It's, uh, it's a, a burden to serve, but uh, we, we greatly appreciate those who do. Uh, elections for all offices every two years, uh, and the lowest voter to legislator ratio in the world. The presidential primary, interestingly, played absolutely no role <laughs> in the essay, in the ballot paper, or in any of the conversations online that I could find about which state we should choose. In retrospect, of course, We've had an influence on that presidential primary and we'll continue to do so. After the state vote, uh, we actually fell under 4,000 participants because about 20% of us had opted out of New Hampshire, which was similar to every other state. So we no longer got national media coverage and it looked as if, you know, maybe this wasn't going to happen. Uh, my wife also was diagnosed with bone cancer and I stepped down as president. So it was, a, it was a difficult time for the Free State Project. Um, but then something funny happened. People started moving to New Hampshire without waiting for the trigger date. Uh, you know, one thing I want to do here, just sort of spontaneously, how many of you here moved in 2004? Anyone here moved in 2004? We've got several who moved in 2004. How many of you moved in 2005? And how many of you here are early movers who have moved to the state? <laughs> and I believe we probably have some signers here who haven't moved but intend to move and have driven here from outside New Hampshire. Anyone here who fits that description? Uh, we've got a couple of them here. Um, so what happened was we saw that this was working. Uh, we saw that we had to continue with this. In fact, um, in 2006, we had a, a Free State Project early mover who won election to the State House as a Democrat. And he's back here. Joel Winters raised his hand earlier. We knew we had to continue with this. And slowly, we started to see uh, the, a snowball rolling as more and more people started joining the Free State Project, started getting interested, our summer festival, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, all of a sudden, and I think it was 2008, all of a sudden we had a thousand people there. And now we're getting close to 1,500 people coming to Porkfest every year. Um, what we've seen is that the Free State Project is working because it gives people hope. There are so many people around the United States who have thought, I can't do anything about politics, I can't do anything about the taxes and regulations and crimes that, that the politicians enact that I disagree with, 
uh, that burden my life or burden the lives of people I care about. Um, so I'm just going to drop out, and many Americans just do that. But the Free State Project provides an avenue toward a much freer society. And that's given people hope, that's given people optimism. You'll never see a more optimistic group of libertarians than you will in New Hampshire. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Matt, who will introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Jason. Um, the next speaker uh, probably doesn't need much of an introduction to this crowd, but Carla Gurik was, did I get that right? Nobody ever pronounced it right. <laughs> Is that better? There you go. I'll let her say it. So uh, the reason why her last name is so hard is because she was born in South Africa and she moved to the U.S. after winning a green card in the lottery. Uh, she moved to New, to New Hampshire in 2008 as part of the Free State Project and she organized Porkfest twice, one of the few, and uh, before becoming president of the Free State Project in 2011. Um, she's done a lot of activism since she was here outside of the Free State Project, including uh, being the plaintiff in a landmark uh, uh, First Circuit Court of Appeals case affirming the right, the First Amendment right, to film encounters with the police. And and in uh, many other ways has been generally bleeding, sweating, and crying, uh, <laughs> cajoling, inspiring, and doing lots of other things to uh, push us forward for the last uh, five years um, to get to the point where we are today. So without further ado, please give a very warm welcome to Carla Jarica. <laughs> That was a very nice introduction, and thank you guys all for being here today. Uh, let me move this a little bit. See, this is why I don't usually have written things, because it's harder. <laughs> um, so five years ago, when I uh, became president of the Free State Project, I had organized, as um, Matt said. <laughs> all right, let's try this again. All right. Five years ago, when I became president of the Free State Project, after having organized uh, two Porcupine Freedom Festivals, which of course we all know is called Pork Fest, which has grown into one of the largest liberty gatherings in the world, and I'm pretty sure this year is going to be historic. Um, at that time, the signer counter stood at about 11,000. I calculated that all things being equal, if we just kind of puttered along, we would trigger the move and it would happen in 2018. And then with five years for everyone to move to New Hampshire, it would be 2023. Then I figured out that meant I would be in my 50s and I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> I wanted to see the, uh, the effects of our historic mass migration movement sooner. Um, you know, in our statement of intent, we have the words exerting the fullest practical effort. And so for me, it, it became an issue of exerting my fullest practical effort. What could I do, because we all believe in individualism, to help this project and move it forward. I knew based on my own actions and on the actions of other early movers that concentrating liberty activists in one state could work, it could help turn the tide, and it did make a difference to expanding liberties in New Hampshire. So three years ago at Liberty Forum, because uh, you know people give me a microphone and I'll just say anything. I you know announced on a back you know we'd done some calculations on the back of an envelope and I was like I think we can do it sooner than that so I'm just gonna throw a date out there and then we'll work towards that. So at Liberty Forum, uh, where of course uh, Edward Snowden will be headlining in a couple of weeks right here in this hotel, he will video conference in from 
Russia, and uh, Governor Benson, who Jason just men mentioned, will also be here during Liberty Forum. So if you don't have your tickets, get them soon. Um, you know, so I announced that if we could fundraise enough money to implement my strategic plan, we could trigger the move sooner. The union leader, the largest newspaper in New Hampshire, ran a front page article saying free staters told to set clock for 2015. So I was a month late that one time I took vacation, but we did it. Today, I'm here to announce that the Free State Project has officially triggered the move and that participants need to come home. You have five years from today, February 3rd, 2016, to come help build the world's first intentional liberty community. community sort of in the idea of a kibbutz or a commune, but a statewide community that's bound by the principles of liberty, which basically neatly can be summarized as live and let live. New Hampshire was selected as the destination for the Free State Project for many reasons. You can go find them online. There's also a great documentary that was made independently by Free Staters, 101 Reasons Why Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. That's free on YouTube, go check it out. Um, so in addition to New Hampshire obviously being a small population state with low taxes, there's no sales tax, there's no personal income tax, um, it also offers just a really attractive place to live, right? So we've got our cities, we've got rural, if you want to live off the grid, you can do that. There are mountains, we have a beautiful sea coast, rolling hills, the quaint New England towns, and some of the best private schools in the nation. New Hampshire consistently ranks as the best pl place in terms of quality of living. It actually beats Hawaii. That confuses me, <laughs> but it does. Um, and in a recent study, the Mises Institute actually identified New Hampshire as the wealthiest, develop, wealthiest state in the developed world. It beats Luxembourg, Norway, and Switzerland. As philosophical and physical pioneers, hoping to create a more peaceful and prosperous society where human actions are based on voluntary exchanges, it is fitting that our movement was born on the internet. As Jason explained, his original essay was posted in 2001. This was years before Facebook even existed. And the idea immediately caught fire because people were looking for answers. What drove him to write the essay is also the reason we're all here, right? We were like, there's gotta be a better solution. Like, there's gotta be a solution. Um, so historically, most of our participants have signed up online. Um, you know, they would go to the website to get information, our forums, you know, remember those things before Facebook. Um, you know, they would come and ask questions. So, as the years progressed, online social media tools obviously became more sophisticated and our reach expanded. It's therefore also fitting that the end of the beginning should take place online. And that happened through targeted social media marketing. And Vince is here, and I just want to give him a quick shout out. Vince drove the first ads, and really, this momentous occasion is really in his hands as well. So Vince, if you could stand up. Last fall, we've been using social media target, targeting tools to expand our audience, right? So for the Facebook marketing, for a while we did some A-B testing. Vince and I would have a weekly phone call and we'd be like, 
let's try this, you know? And uh, we found an ad that worked really well. It was very simple. It's two uh, silhouettes in a cartoon and the one person says, should the government? And the other one says, nope. <laughs> and it was great because that spoke to our kind of people and I would say, you know, on the spectrum because we are a big tent, right? And so as long as you kind of subscribe to the idea that should government, nope, we want you here. So uh, we finished the A-B testing and then uh, we started doing just throwing money at it, right? And we ended up spending up to $500 a day on the ads. Um, this yielded a significant number of signers. These signers are vetted in the exact same way as anyone else who's ever signed up before. They provide an email address. Um, in more than 86% of cases, they also provide a physical mailing address, although it's, they're not required to do so. They get um, an email saying thanks for signing up, and then they get a welcome package in the mail. And you know we let them know how to con connect with the community, and of course now are going to start highly encouraging everyone to move here. So from October 1st last year, we gained a record-breaking 2,539 signers. <laughs> also to think about why, right? I've always held the opinion that if we got the concept of the Free State Project in front of more people, we could get more people to sign up. And I was right. Um, you know, people are looking for this solution. That said, of course, the Free State Project is also not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone wants to live their principles. But there is a large number of people who are dissatisfied in this country. There was a poll up on Politico a couple of days ago where you know 71% of the respondents said they think the country is uh, dissatisfied with the way the, the direction of the country is going. 49% of those people said you know they're not happy with the federal government and 29% said they're angry at the government. Now, some people just want to sit around and complain, or apparently vote for Trump. <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> Others are seeking solutions. They want to do something. And that's ultimately what the Free State Project's about. It's about action. Upping and moving to one place to concentrate principled people together to effect change. As our slogan says, liberty in our lifetime. Nearly 2,000 people made the move early. With just 10% of those 20,000 movers that we know are gonna come here, these people working as individuals have already expanded liberties in New Hampshire. Some run for office. More than 40 free staters over the past decade have been elected to the state house. These representatives have worked on issues like legalizing same-sex marriage, cutting the budget, expanding school choice, and passing life-saving drug reform legislation. I practiced that sentence. <laughs> um, others bring and start businesses and create jobs. Many buy and uh, invest in real estate. Free staters have invested more than $30 million in real estate in New Hampshire. The first the world's first ATM Bitcoin was invented right here in Manchester by Free Staters. And many of our participants, as we know, are techies. So there really is a sort of startup culture, and I want to see more of that. Others, of course, practice civil disobedience to raise awareness about issues like drug prohibition and regulatory licensing, both things that dis disproportionately negatively affect the poor. Others, like me, fight back in the courts. In 2014, uh, I think everyone here by now knows, I prevailed in the case against the town of Weir, uh, where, you know, we... It, it's a widely cited case now. I'm very proud of it. Um, it's important because uh, even though my camera was not functioning, the court decision says that 
that doesn't matter. So I highly encourage anyone, if you're ever in a situation where you're in a police encounter, even if you don't have your video set up, just take out your phone. It's a way to witness what is going on. It's a way to create a record for people. And we all know everyone's on better behavior when they know they're being watched. Um, the other cool thing, and, and this case, because it was a First Circuit case, you know, applies to most of New England as well as Puerto Rico, so it applies to millions of people who can now know that when they're in a police encounter, you know, film it and that'll be good. The other part I'm really proud of is that in that case, um, police officers can no longer claim qualified immunity you know, there's a special get out of free card where they say, um, you know, for us, ignorance of the law is no excuse, but they are the enforcers of the law and they use ignorance of the law as an excuse. That's basically what qualified immunity is. So in that case, they said as it relates to someone filming police officers, the officers will no longer be able to claim qualified immunity and they can be held personally liable if they do arrest you for filming. Um, you can also learn more about this in my forthcoming book. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are many other examples of things people have done, and you know, I encourage the press that's here, you know, talk to the people, everyone has a cool story, everyone here is doing something interesting, and um, you know, will be available today and then also tonight at the press party. So you may be wondering what the future of the Free State Project looks like. We'll be unveiling a comprehensive plan about the next phase at Liberty Forum. Another teaser. <laughs> um, but I can tell you this. We'll continue to solicit signers. We will be reaching out to them. We'll be reaching out to all the new signers, of course, via email and mail, and we'll be calling them. Ultimately, we want 20,000 movers in the state. Now I know there's a question everyone wants to ask, which is, how many will come? First, I want to say, 10% have already come, although they weren't obligated to do so. Second, it's difficult to speculate at this stage, but the goal remains 20,000 movers. And finally, I believe, if we build it, they will come. As we continue to build on our early impressive successes here in the Granite State, the federal government will continue its brazen overreach, whether it's its police state tactics, um, surveillance, police militarization, the unconstitutional wars that are taking the toll on millions of innocent people across the world, or them trying to get their grubby little paws on our internet. As more people awaken to this reality, more people will seek solutions, which life in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project offers. In the future, we will see the expansion of personal and economic liberties. People somehow seem to have this notion that freedom doesn't work or that it's scary or I don't really know what the issue is. But think about it this way. If autobahns work in Germany, why can't they work here? If pot legalization works in Amsterdam and Colorado, why can't it work here? If gambling works in Monaco, or if gambling's okay when the government does it with the lotto, then why can't it work here? If deregulated markets uh, keep Hong Kong competitive, why can't we see more of that here? If unfavorable tax burdens are forcing people to leave their states and move their businesses someplace, I have a suggestion. Let's welcome them to New Hampshire and build a silicon mill yard here. <laughs> In 10 to 20 years, I know New Hampshire will stand as a wealthy, prosperous, autonomous example, a beacon of liberty for the rest of the world to emulate. The future of the free state is very, very bright. And I say, first New Hampshire, then the world.
just want to say thanks again to Carla. I, th I think that many of us will never fully understand or appreciate uh, how great a sacrifice she has made over the last several years to keep this um, giant, crazy aircraft carrier of a, of a movement headed in the right direction. Um, it, it's really, uh, I've gotten a peek behind the scenes and it's really intense, it can be really intense, it can be really overwhelming. Um, we, we are all a bunch of people who like to be left alone and do our own thing and it can be really hard. <laughs> I've learned, started learning, but it can be really hard to get people to all start marching in the same direction, even for such a good cause. So can you please warm, well, uh, join me again and just really give me a hand. I'd also like to, um, to say thank you to the literally thousands and thousands of people who have also made all of this happen. Um, all of the activists, all of the signers, all of the movers, anyone who donated, anyone who attended any of our events or talked about us on social media or talked about us to your friends, your family, your neighbors, your colleagues. Um, and all of the activists who have made significant sacrifices, some of them have even gone to jail, some of them have lost their lives. Um, we obviously could not all do this without each other, and so I would like to invite everyone to give a round of applause to all of you out there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and that's about it. We're going to open it up to, uh, to questions now, so if anyone has a question, just go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get a mic over to you. We've got a wireless mic around the regular one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if anybody has any questions, just uh, raise your hand and I will get the mic out to you. So what is the Free State Project going to do now? <laughs> you said that people are going to be able to sign up, and I wanted to find out what uh, what the sign up process is going to look like now that we've uh, reached uh, twenty thousand. Are they going to be friends of the Free State Project? Are they going to have to have moved already to sign up? Um, I mean, to me, the uh, the business of the Free State Project at this point is to get people to move. Um, it seems to me if you want to label yourself a free stater, which let's hope that's not a pejorative in the future, um, <laughs> if, if you want to do such a thing, let's, let's get them here and then we can sign them up on the mover counter. That's the counter I want to see move. I don't know if that's a question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, agreed. Um, the, the mover, you know, uh, we will continue to get signers because not everyone who has signed thus far, will, you know, is going to move. So we are going to continue to get, you know, signers. Obviously, that's less of, of an important uh, label or distinction. That's just an indication that you're actually going to do the important thing, which is actually move here. So yes, to all the people who've already moved and the people who will continue to move, though, that's really the, the critical number that we're going to be keeping an eye on, and we're not going to stop until it hits 20,000 at least. And we're not going to have a signer counter anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> We'll keep signing people up, but that's not to be the number we promote. Uh, you guys need to all prepare yourselves tomorrow. The counter is going back down to 10%. <laughs> so we're going to start all over again. It's not a sign. This, is the real, this is the real count. This is the one that matters. So. Are we done? Come on, just go around here. We got like 30 feet of white board. Hi, good morning, or is it afternoon? My name is Ryan Miner. I'm from Maryland. Um, I'm a friend of Leah. I'm here to watch the primaries unfold for this political mess. 
I'm from Maryland, and there is pockets of us uh, libertarians all over the place, in places you would never expect. And uh, Leah is on the verge of seriously convincing me to take part in this movement. I have, I'm married, we have two kids, and, uh, And we are we are uh, we are in discussions. And, and when I nudge my wife at the end of the night and say, "Hey, you know, what do you think about this?" and she's like, "Oh, I would love to do it, but we're we're you know, it's it's just a, it's a matter of coming up here and and finding work and making sure our kids have the right selection for schools and uh, finding a place to live, selling the house." So, I guess my question is is that how, how do you convince people who are kind of like myself that are that are like, okay, I'm there, but I need to do X, Y, and Z. How is that, um, do you have people that guide you through that process and say, hey, don't be scared, don't be worried, this is how we'll get you there. Yeah. Thank you. I say Nike it, just do it. <laughs> but yes, we do have a lot of uh, support structures. You know, uh, Chris Lopez, our administrator there, who's also been very... Yeah. instrumental in sort of building the community she works with people uh, we suggest people come up you know come check it out definitely come to our events so come to Port Fest or Liberty Forum it's a great way to meet the community and then also when you come then you ask questions you build a network uh, I highly recommend getting a 603 phone number although I still have my 917 but uh, you know that helps and then uh, you know just do it. <laughs> It'll work out. That's what we all did. <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot of families in the Free State Project, so you will be able to find a community that you fit into, and that's one of the things, one of the personal sort of selfish reasons to move to New Hampshire is just the fact that you'll have a much bigger social support network and friend network and professional network even uh, than you had before. Sometimes you have to you have to plan and take calculated risks. In my case, it took us a number of years for me to find uh, a temporary job here in New Hampshire. I left a tenure track academic position for a temporary job, and uh, and and since then I managed to find extensions to that. And so we're finding a way to make it work, right? And that's what people do. They um, you might have to look a little outside your normal occupation. You might need to take something on a one-year contract or something to get here. Um, but then once you do that, you can find a way to make it work. And then also I recommend we have uh, various resources and groups and pages on Facebook and on the website. So there's a new group called um, fspmovers.com uh, that, you know, you show your wife there's some great videos that sort of highlight what the families and communities are doing here. And then in terms of jobs, there's an FSP job alert uh, group on Facebook that has about 3,500 members. And we try and actively post if someone has a lead for a job or if you're looking for something in particular, you can post and say, hey, this is my field. Does anyone know someone? So really it is an issue of also just using this growing network. And you know, we want people to come, so we want to help you. It's working. <laughs> Hello. Uh, what do you find to be sort of the number one bit of resistance you get from people who want to move but ultimately maybe don't? What's the biggest sort of complaint they have before they see it and how do you address that? I mean, for me, the one I hear most frequently is I have to sell my house. And that, you know, was a bit more of a challenge a while back when the market was really bad. So um, that, you know, that's a chicken and egg issue. Um, we hear New Hampshire is too cold a lot, uh, <laughs> but here's the thing that that but, makes but it's it's currently what 50 degrees right, outside. Right. So, so global, global warming is solving all of that. What are going to get it on the ground floor before? We're it's ahead of the <laughs> Pretty soon, you know those. We have we have 18 miles of coastline here in New Hampshire. For now, we expect <laughs> that to grow. <laughs> What part of Massachusetts maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think the climate is actually a benefit. First of all, I actually enjoy the climate. I like doing winter sports, and so you just have to, you know, get into it and, and take advantage of all that New Hampshire, a beautiful state, has to offer. 
but also it, it means that um, you know people aren't going to be moving here for the wrong reasons. I mean, if we chose a state like Florida or Arizona, would be swamped by people moving there for the climate and not necessarily for freedom. So you state want a place like that hot weather. State is like hot weather. It's true. <laughs> you want a place that attracts people for the freedom and not for other reasons. I grew up in Phoenix, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Liberty warms the cockle of your heart. <laughs> Are there any other uh, questions? Are you excited? <laughs> Hell yes. Ciao. <laughs> So we heard a little bit from Carla about her vision for the future, but Jason, what's your vision for the Free State Project here in New Hampshire? A little bit more maybe on the political aspect of it, if you can. Yeah, so I, I've done some, some research to try to see what would happen if we get a number of movers here. And I think even if we sort of got sort of low end six to 8,000 movers, I think we'll do better than that. But just imagine, you know, most conservative possible scenario. I did some research uh, looking at the size of the libertarian constituency in all 50 states and how that correlates with those states' policies. And basically what that suggests is even if we got that number of movers, in the long run, we would see New Hampshire become the freest state on virtually every dimension. Lowest tax burden, um, lowest corporate welfare subsidies, um, deregulation of occupational licensing, you know, least uh, barriers to entry to starting a business in the country. Uh, we would see marijuana legalization. We would see you know, the lowest incarceration rate in the country. In fact, we would see um, all victimless crimes arrests. If I do that in the data set, just take out all victimless crimes arrests in New Hampshire. Uh, that is part of that. Um, uh, that, that shows that uh, you know, that's the expected level of freedom that we can get in the long run by increasing the size of the libertarian constituency that much. So I think we're gonna get a lot more than that number of movers. Uh, actually, and they're going to be activists and they're going to get active in different ways. I think one of the most important things that we can do, this is not part of the Free State Project necessarily, but as individuals, once we've moved with the Free State Project, is education and showing people our ideas and, uh, and showing them that these ideas can work and bringing the population along. See, part of what has been an obstacle to libertarianism nationwide is that we can't get our message heard. Our signal is drowned out. People don't don't hear the libertarian idea. Libertarian, what, even what is that? Is that like something to do with librarians? Or like, it just sounds. Is that Lyndon Larouche? My mom thought it had something to do with Lyndon Larouche. No. You mean like Rand Paul? <laughs> so, so we have to have a concentrated effort in a particular place just to get our message heard. And the idea is not to take over. We can't take over. But the idea is to show people the ideas. And if they like them, they'll vote for us and they'll vote for those ideas in various ways. You know, vote with their dollars or vote with their ballots. Um, and if they don't, they don't. But this is the, the only way we're ever going to see if a free society can work is by presenting these ideas to people, showing them the arguments, showing them the evidence, uh, and, and bringing them along. What evidence is there that you've had traction results now that get multiplied by more people showing up? Well, we've had a lot of uh, victories in New Hampshire, and, and Carla mentioned some of them, but uh, we've had a lot of, if you just want to look at the policy victories, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a laundry list, so we can look at the fact that the size of government has shrunk in New Hampshire over the last five years, uh, both in terms of government consumption, subsidies, taxes, all those have dropped as a percentage of the economic economy over the last five years. Uh, the, the state has repealed a number of regulations that were barriers to, to businesses, sort of cronyist regulations to protect incumbents. One example of this is the um, certificate of need law for hospital construction. You basically had to get the permission of your competitors to build a hospital or even add on to a hospital. Most states have this. Uh, we repealed that in 2011-2012. It actually um, has gone into effect this year. 
um, we've started to see um, big moves in criminal justice. We're the only state in the country that has passed a jury nullification law allowing defense lawyers to inform juries of their right to judge the law, not just the facts. And, uh, and so we've protected that right in the courtroom. And it's been exercised. Uh, it's been exercised on juries on which free staters have served. Uh, free staters have written... <laughs> She's here, too. <laughs> She's here. Uh, free staters have written bills to deregulate, deregulate homeschooling when the Free State Project chose New Hampshire as one of the most regulated states for homeschooling in the country. It's now one of the least regulated states for homeschooling in the country. Uh, we have a tax credit scholarship law now where businesses can give uh, to a scholarship fund for private and home education and receive an 85% tax credit. Uh, that uh, scholarship fund is managed by a friend of the Free State Project and free staters were instrumental in the legislature in getting that passed. Uh, there's a school board in Croydon, New Hampshire that has chosen to allow parents to choose their kids, uh, choose a school for their kids, even if it's a private school, and the town money will follow the child. Uh, they're locked in a legal battle with the state now to ensure that system stays in place, but it is operational as of this moment. And that happened because uh, the chair of that school board is a free stater, and there's a, a, a strong pro-school choice majority on the school board and, and among the voters of that town. Uh, that's just a short list I could go on at length, but those are some of the most important accomplishments that we can trace directly to the efforts of people who move because of the Free State Project, as well as uh, friends of the Free State Project, such as yourself. And I, I would just add sort of uh, maybe on the privacy issue um, and militarization issue, you know, free staters were uh, instrumental <laughs> on stopping real ID in this state. This is also New Hampshire is the only state in America that does not allow license plate scanners uh, for law enforcement, which means, you know, where you go and what you're doing is your business, not theirs. So um, we're, we're told by Thomas Jefferson that uh, not only does the, the government grows, um, not only has the Free State Project managed to roll it back, but the government has increased in 49 other states, in all likelihood, I don't know, I haven't done the, the studies on it, but um, what I want to know, what, what's the percentage of people who not necessarily are Free Staters, because Free Staters have managed to activate some locals too. What's the percentage of free staters that are in New Hampshire legislature? Um, you know, and what kind of effect have they managed to stop laws as a result? I think. Are you asking what rate do free staters get elected to the legislature? What percentage of people uh, in the New Hampshire House are uh, libertarians? So if we want to include all libertarians, including Free State Project movers, but not. Uh, excluding others, then it's um, at least 10% of the state house is a, is a libertarian constituency. I don't think you could say that of any other state legislature in the country. And, and I think if you reduce the, the standard there, like, you know, if you include sort of the 80 percenters, it's probably double that. Yeah. It's more than that. More, uh, yeah. reliable so we have a legislator here to uh, correct that show. If you like, Mike. Sure, Mike. Yeah. There you go. Yes, yeah. uh, we can get 80 to 100 on almost any specific issue in, on the Liberty side. It's not the same 80 or 100 on every issue, but we, we do consistently get that much. And, and that's a quarter, then, of the State House. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. 20%. So if 18,000 more free settlers moving tomorrow morning, we obviously are not ready for them as far as infrastructure, jobs, housing. Right. How do you, what, what do you recommend we do to get ready for the next 18,000 and beyond? <laughs> <laughs> Buckle our seatbelts. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think to, to some degree, the Free State Project itself is not, um, you know, we're not going to be providing financial assistance to everyone. It's not, we're not going to be building the housing or, or you know, providing the jobs directly. Um, so everyone who moves is, is to some degree responsible for their own 
you know, health and, and wealth and well-being and, you know, getting themselves a job and finding housing for themselves. We provide a lot of information and, and resources and support for people, you know, for people who are looking for those things, you know, to help them decide, you know, which, uh, you know, which quaint town in New Hampshire they want to, to settle in, um, how, you know, where, what resources are available for them to find a job, um, you know, how, uh, you know, social activities that they can, you know, get connected to, um, uh, different forms of activism, uh, uh, different groups working on different um, different issues or, or you know political or non-political, um, connecting people to all of that. So I think that that really is our you know directly is our mission is to help people find all of that. But it, you know the economy of New Hampshire hopefully will grow will grow with us as people are moving here and working and being productive and moving. Maybe they've got a, a business that they own that they're going to be moving here. Or maybe they're they're going to you know, pack up, move here, and, and uh, start a new business, as many free traders have already done, that will provide jobs for, for others. Yeah, we've had a, already a lot of entrepreneurs move to New Hampshire, Matt being one of them, uh, Jason Osborne, uh, Christopher David, uh, and Mike Finger is here. Uh, and, and so Phillips. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just, just to name a, a few. I can't, you almost can't name them all. And, uh, and so they're providing jobs. And it, one thing to, to bear in mind is that if you provide a lot of value added to the liberty movement when you move to New Hampshire, people will invest in you in one way or another. Um, so you know, show yourself to be a, a team player and, uh, and, and things will work out for you. I think we have time for uh, one more question. So if there's anybody else uh, who has one. What are your success measurables? Like, at what point do you declare this to have been a victory instead of like? Oh, I declared it right then. here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one thing to bear in mind is that this is happening and will continue to happen forevermore. Right? This is now the free state. Yes. Libertarians yeah. around the world are now thinking. That is the place, if liberty is going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen there. And so we're just going to keep growing. There's not going to be any end to that. We're not going to decline. This is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. We're going to keep seeing more and more freedom in New Hampshire. Um, so in that sense, we have kind of already won, because this is now the destination of choice for liberty people around the world. And I think if you, if you want to look really far into the future, um, if we are, are successful and we achieve our goal and our dream here of, of liberty in our lifetime, we hopefully, I mean, hopefully it's not just New Hampshire that benefits from this. Hopefully other states and other countries around the world, other people will look at us, see that we are peaceful, that we are prosperous, that we are happy, and they will, they will look at what has gone into that and, and what we've done to accomplish that. And they will say, you know what, maybe we should try some of those things here. So we can begin exporting our ideas, if they work, back out to the world at large, and everyone can benefit uh, from, our, from our efforts. All right, well, thank you so much to everybody for uh, coming. And if you have any more questions for Matt, Jason, or Carla, they'll be sticking around for a little while. Um, and actually, let's just hear one more round of applause for these guys. This is a pretty incredible <laughs>